In today's video, we're gonna talk about the lingo, the terminology that goes along with the music industry. My name is Rick Barker, former manager of Superstar Taylor Swift, host of the Music Industry Blueprint Podcast. And if you like videos like this, I would love for you to drop down below and hit subscribe. All right, let's jump in to the first term. So let's look at labels, record labels. Major labels are the big dogs. That's the Sony, the Universal, uh, the big machine. They're the labels, the Warner Brothers. They are the ones who usually the artists that you hear signed to the radio are signed to a major label deal. They have more resources. They have, in a lot of cases, more money, more relationships, but there's also more responsibilities that come with being signed to a major label. The other label is an independent label. That's a smaller version with less resources, not necessarily less relationships, but they're not dealing with the same type of money. They're not dealing with the same types of pressure. It's very easy now for you to be your first independent label with hopes that down the road, if your goal is world domination, that you can partner with a major label, but it's major labels and independent labels. They are two very different things. The next thing I wanna talk about when it comes to labels are 360 deals. 360 deals are very common in the industry today. It means that the label is participating in all revenue streams. The old model meant that the label would put up all the money, but they would only participate from the sale of records or the sale of downloads. What they realized was it took too long for them to recoup back their original investment. And since they were the one putting the budgets together and paying for the promotion of the artist, they wanted to get paid first and they wanted to get paid quicker, so they wanted to participate in the publishing, in the touring, in the merch sales. So that's what it means when you sign a 360 deal, is that person is participating in all revenue streams. A&R, also known as Artists in Repertoire. That's the department of the record company who helps an artist develop their style, their brand, their image. They're responsible for organizing the recordings of the music. In many cases, you are your own A&R person right now. So if someone asks who's doing your A&R, it could be you, it could be a producer, it could be someone else. But A&R is the development of the entire brand, including the music. Unsolicited material. What that means is that it's material that someone didn't request. Record companies, publishing companies, a lot of bigger management companies won't allow you to send unsolicited material, which means they don't know the source that it came from. The best way to be solicited is to go through an entertainment attorney, someone like myself, who has relationships with these individuals, and we can get your music to them. If you just try to do it on your own, a lot of times they won't accept it, and you'll get a response back that says, sorry, we don't accept unsolicited material. Production deals. What those are is where that's where someone's going to A&R your project, put up all the money, and they're gonna sign you to a production deal with hopes that when they get you signed to a major label or to an investor of some sort or a publisher that they're gonna be able to recoup that investment, which means they're going to be able to make their money back. What you wanna be careful of is a lot of times you'll sign a production deal, make sure you understand who the producer also has a deal with. A very good example was when Kane Brown wanted to sign with Big Machine Records, he had signed a production deal earlier and that producer had a deal already in place with someone else. So the artist was not at the mercy to sign with whoever they wanted to. So be very careful when it comes to production deals. Crowdfunding is just that, where you're getting your fan base to help in paying for your record or your video or your touring. It was very popular a couple years ago. Right now, it's harder to crowdfund. We had some crowdfunding platforms that went bankrupt, ended up taking a lot of money from your fans. The artist had to fulfill the obligations, but were never able to get the money. Crowdfunding is something that comes later down the road once you've built an audience. DIY, do it yourself. You'll hear people talk about DIY musicians, there's the DIY musicians conference. That just means basically that you are acting in all roles. Most of it you're doing on your own. I like DWY 
which stands with the, for Done With You, which is kind of like a service that I provide. But the DIY musician, it's a great time to be a DIY musician these days because a lot of the resources that in the, in the past you didn't have access to, you currently have access to them. Aggregators. An aggregator in your world is like a CD baby or TuneCore or DistroKid. That's the person that you go through that actually will get your music placed on these streaming platforms and in these other distribution channels that are available to you. A lot of places will not let you come direct because they want quality control. They want to work with someone that they know understands that part of the business. It's super important that you find an aggregator that you trust, someone who I feel has your best interest at heart. I highly recommend CD Baby as your aggregator. Management. That's what I do. Someone who oversees your career, someone who helps create strategy, awareness. They help you stay on point with your brand. They open doors when uh, the time is right for you. They help create those relationships when you're in a position to take advantage of it. Management is so important right now and you're in a good place. You know, you're going to be your own first manager. So you're going to want to get as much education as you can. You're also going to want to surround yourself with people that can help guide you in this business. Once again, that is the service that I provide as a music manager. Agents are the people who get paid to go out and get you gigs or endorsements. They are usually paid a percentage, 10% of whatever they get for you. So if you hear somebody talk about a booking agent or an agent, that's the person who's representing you and going out and trying to generate business for you. Publicity. Publicity is just that, you getting your message out into the world. A lot of times you'll want to hire a publicist who has relationships with uh, certain networks or certain playlists or things like that. Publicity can be very expensive. Just know that going in. You are your best publicist right now by utilizing the free tools that are available to you through social media. When you're wanting to publicize, make sure that you're not always just talking about yourself. We've talked about that in other videos, but a publicist is a great person to have on your team when the time is right. But once again, it can get very expensive. An entertainment attorney. You may have a family member who's an attorney. They may practice law. You want to deal with an entertainment attorney because the terminology, uh, there's big differences in our business compared to other businesses. You want someone who is established in that space. Uh, it's never too early to reach out and start building relationships with entertainment attorneys. They work in various ways. Some can take a small percentage. Some can work on a retainer. Some can, you know, take a look at a contract and you pay them to look at the contract, but just make sure that when you're reaching out to an attorney, that they are a music entertainment attorney. Radio tour. You can do radio tour as an independent artist. You can do radio tour as a major artist. What that is, is when you go meet the folks that work at radio and start building those relationships so that when you start releasing music, that they feel that they know you well enough. They've seen you perform. They, they feel that you bring something to their station when you bring their music, but that's something you can do on your own. I don't recommend radio tour right now. Once again, it can be very expensive to travel to all these different stations to go out and try building relationships. You are also at this point competing with the major record companies who have a much bigger budget than you in a lot of cases, and they have relationships with these radio stations. So it's one of the biggest scams in the industry right now is people saying, hey, just get me your music, pay this amount of money, I can take you out on radio tour. Once again, it can get very expensive. Uh, on the low end, you're talking 20 to $30,000. On the high end, a couple hundred thousand. That's what the majors are paying and that's what you're competing against. Investors, that's anyone who decides that they wanna put money into your business. Investors in the music industry, look for someone who is okay taking risk. Look for someone who isn't looking for guaranteed returns. It's really hard to uh, guarantee any types of returns in this business, but the investors, you should always set up a deal where your investors can get paid back as soon as possible. Make sure that when you're working with investors that you have an entertainment attorney look at your contract, but an investor is anyone who's making a financial commitment to you. Playlist. 
big right now. Playlists are the new radio stations. Playlists, you'll find them on Spotify. You'll find them on Apple Music. You'll find them on Amazon. This is a place for you to get your music played. It's a way that now, as we're in a society of streamers, you go through an aggregator, CD Baby, for example. You get your music onto a platform like Spotify and on Spotify, they have playlist and playlist is usually mood specific, genre specific, but it's a really good place for you to get your music heard and get it out there into the world. Curators are the people who run the playlist. Spotify has editorial curators. These are people that you cannot pay to get your music on their platforms. There are some non editorial curators who you can pay to get on their platforms. There's a lot of companies that will help you meet these curators and they pay the curators a fee to listen to music. So just be very careful. Uh, a great playlist cur uh, curator and company that I like is Playlist Push. Uh, they have the ability and they have relationships with uh, smaller playlists, some medium to large playlists, where it's a great place for you to get started with your music. Reversion. Reversion. Uh, is usually utilized inside of publishing deals. We'll talk about publishing here in a second, but a reversion means is at some point, a percentage reverts back to you. So for example, if you do a 50, 50 publishing deal, which means the publisher keeps 50% and you keep 50%, you can set up a reversion that when you have recouped, which means they've made all their money back that you can start getting more percentage towards you. Most of that will not happen uh, during until, excuse me, you are recouped. And that term is usually used in contracts when you're dealing with record companies and publishing companies. Master recordings. That's what the whole Taylor Swift, Scott Borchetta, Scooter Braun was about. The master recordings are the actual physical recordings of your music. Whoever pays for the recording of the music usually will maintain control of the masters. And that's what happens when you sign with a record company is they are going to own your masters because that's how they're going to get their money back. They are going to exploit those masters and do everything they can to get them out into the world so that they can make money back. As an independent artist, you own your masters. Make sure if you're doing a production deal or something, really set up and make sure that your attorney looks at who owns the masters and at what point back to that term reversion, the masters can revert back to you because ultimately you want to control your music. Merchandise, also known as merch, sweatshirts like my Vigo sweatshirt here from my buddy Ben, hats, CDs, bracelets, merchandise right now, in my opinion, is where the money is being made inside the music industry. You sell one t-shirt to a fan, the profit that you make is higher than if you were to get 10,000 streams on a song. So merchandise is very important as you build that relationship with the fan. Merch is ultimately what you want to sell them. Publishing is your music. There's two sides to publishing. There's the writer side and there's the publishing side. So when you have a song, that song is 200%. There's 100% for the writer and 100% for the publisher. You might be your own publisher. So when you split that up, let's say Hannah, who's shooting this video, Hannah and I write a song together. Hannah would get 50% of the writer's share. I would get 50% of the writer's share. She would also get 50% of the publishing and I would get 50% of the publishing. Publishing deals are fantastic. They can help uh, do everything they can to get your music out into the world. They can, we call it exploit the copyright. They can go out and try to make as much money as they possibly can. Publishers are great at helping set up co-writes, building relationships. You are your own publisher. The best way to find out about publishing is I recommend you go to songtrust.com, all one word. They do a fantastic version. Uh, they have a, a download guide, basically the publishing guide that you can download. And I'll make sure that that link is available for you, but that's the easiest, uh, explanation I've ever seen of a very complicated topic. PROs stands for performance rights organizations. They are the people that collect your performance royalties. There's two types of royalties. There's performance royalties and mechanical royalties. Performance royalties are paid to you when your songs are played on radio, YouTube, television. 
mechanical royalties are paid to you when something is sold in like a CD or a download. It's very important that you have people, your PROs don't collect your mechanical royalties. So once again, that'll be explained in the song trust download, but the two types of royalties are performance and mechanical. Sync placements, very popular right now. Getting your songs and film, television, games, commercials, as there's very few spots on the chart, there are a lot of different places that you can place your, uh, your music. My buddy, Michael Elsner from Master Music Licensing had me, he said, go close your eyes and listen to a television show. He said, listen to the different and the amount of songs that are in a show. A lot of times you're gonna find there's you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 opportunities for music to be placed. That is what's called sync. Streaming is what happens when your music is played over a device like your phone. You didn't download it, you streamed it, you just listened to it. YouTube is streaming, Spotify is streaming, Apple Music is streaming, Amazon. Uh, that's what the world we live in right now. Most people are streaming their music. Physical and digital distribution. Physical distribution is the physical making of a record. Digital distribution, once again, is getting your music on these digital platforms like Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, Pandora, Sirius, XM Radio. That's the digital distribution side. Once again, someone like CD Baby can make sure that you have that taken care of. Someone like Disc Makers can make sure that you get your CDs printed and you have the ability to sell them at your live shows or in bundles to fans during crowdfunding. Uh, it's a great opportunity to have both, especially when you uh, have a, an audience that's really interested in buying physical product. Vinyl is also very popular these days. Uh, at the taping of this, vinyl outsold CD this past year. Mechanical license, once again, that's what we talk about from the sale of physical product, you'll need a performance license and a mechanical license. Mechanical, you'll work with companies like the Harry Fox Agency, also known as HFA. They collect royalties for you. Song Trust can collect mechanical royals, royalties for you worldwide. You'll learn more about that when you go to songtrust.com and download their free publishing guide. Sound Exchange. Uh, is very, very important. You must also register your music with Sound Exchange because they are the folks that collect the internet radio money for you. Sirius, Pandora, if you happen to get your song on Radio Disney, which is on Sirius XM, that's an internet radio station. Sound Exchange collects for the internet radio stations. Royalties are just that. That's the money that's earned from however your song is played, whether it's performance, whether it's mechanical, royalties are the money that comes in. That's how everyone gets paid back, whether it be the label, whether it be you, whether it be your publisher. Split sheets. A split sheet is something that you would take into a writing room and it lets everyone know who has what part of the song, who has what part of the writing shares, who has what part of the publishing shares. It's very important that you fill out a split sheet so that there's no confusion because trust me, once money starts getting made, then everyone thinks that they want a little bit more than they're entitled to. A good split sheet will make sure that that's taken care of. Recoupment, we talked about it. That's when all the money that was spent is made back. It's a real simple term. They have recouped their investment. They have recouped the money that was spent. Mixing and mastering. Mixing is when you take your song and you mix it where the guitars are here and the drums are here and the vocals are here. Mastering is what happens after all the mixing is done. Then you come in and you do the mastering. Branding. Branding is who you are, what your music stands for. Branding, you want to make sure that your music's on brand, your socials are on brand, your website is on brand. A lot of people confuse and think that branding is just pretty colors and logos and fonts. There's more to it. You are a brand. You want to make sure that everything's on point. A real good manager will help you make sure that everything's on point. If you're working with an A&R person, they will also make sure that it's on point. Label services. At every record company, they have different departments. They have the radio promotion department. They have the sync department. They have the marketing department. Uh, they have a lot of different, the A&R department, 
there are certain companies out there right now that will offer you label services where they will do some of those jobs. CD Baby has done a really good job of establishing themselves to also provide label services. So that's what that term means. And points and percentages is where we're going to wrap this up. If someone says you get four points on a record, that means you get 4% of that record. A point is a percentage point. There's a lot of points that your producer will ask for. There's certain percentages that your publishing company will ask for, your record label will ask for. A lot of times when you sign a record deal, it'll be 85, 15, just for simple math, the record company gets 85% or 85 points of everything that comes in and you get 15. For easy math, for every dollar, the record company would get 85 cents and you would get 15 and you don't start getting your 15 until recoupment. You see how all these words kind of tie in together? It's a very interesting industry. There's a lot of terminology. I'm sure next year there'll be more. We'll constantly be updating this, but I hope you found value in this and go out there and make sure that you're protected. So I know this video was a little longer than I normally do them, but I felt it was very important that I share this with you. That is actually just one part of a program uh, that I have available called Fanbase Blueprint. And I wanted to share that with you. If you're into these types of videos, go right below this and subscribe, hit the notification bell. We put these videos out every Wednesday. I also mentioned some references. You can find all of them below in the description. I would also love a comment. I go back in and look at all the comments. I appreciate that. If you know someone that you feel could benefit from this, I would appreciate a share as well. And I will see you in the next video.